Boom. Hello, friends. How are we all doing? I hope this finds you absolutely uh, wonderful on, uh, on your Sunday morning, if indeed it is Sunday morning where you are. Um, oh, hang on. Technical glitch. I'm Chris Thrall. I'm a former Royal Marine. And as most of you, I'm sure, are well aware by now, when I'm not hosting the wonderful Bought the T-Shirt podcast, we do a few reaction videos. And um, today I just wanted to cover something that's been, you know, it's been a fascination with the people, Princess Diana, her life, the effect she had on many of us. Um to a sort of degree, and I mean this with no disrespect, it was like it was forced on us as kids. Does it put it in the comments below? Were you old enough to remember the, the royal wedding and the street parties? And every kid in the UK you got a you got issued a mug. <laughs> I think it had some gold on it. I might I might be wrong there. You know, Prince Charles and Princess Diana getting married, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, this was a, a, an incredibly enigmatic um, woman, very beautiful, clearly, can we say, more in touch with the, the population than possibly the, the other royals were. She was famous, wasn't she, for, for um, spending a lot of time with sufferers of of aids aids hiv photographed in hospitals she did that classic walk across the the uh ground that was mined with landmines or obviously it had been cleared but that was kind of her thing towards the end of her life um that she spoke out about landmines these hideous things that are put in the ground and they can stay there for well you know, let's just say anything up to a hundred years and continue to just maim children years and years after the conf conflict is gone. If in fact, many people suggested, w was it the fact that she stood out against the arms companies that possibly led to her demise? Um, so the point there, folks, is, you know, her death affected us all, didn't it? Or certainly in my generation. Um, I remember I was in a hotel room in, in Dover, I think it was, or a BNB, and b And I woke up early one morning. It was back in my tobacco smuggling days. And the guys were still asleep in the room. And I, I just flicked on the TV. And there was a black, it was a black screen with right writing, white writing across it. And it just said, uh, the Princess of Wales and Dodie Al Fayed have been killed in a car accident in Paris. And it just said that. In fact, I write about this, folks, in my book, 40 Nights. For those of you who, who've read it, you'll, you'll know the bit I'm referring to. And I went, guys, guys, wake up, wake up. Diana's dead. <laughs> and literally, the chap next to me went, huh, what? You woke us up to tell us that. <laughs> and I remember thinking, fucking Philistines. <laughs> but yeah, it had an effect on us all. I just want to say here and now, folks, um, it, it goes without saying, we mean no disrespect by doing this video. Uh, no disrespect to Diana and her family, her boys, whatever. But I think, like, if I died, I'd like to think that people would search for the truth. Actually, I forget that. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm not that important. But what I'm saying is, is we mean no disrespect here. Um, yes, we are going to go to the, 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 into the realms of conspiracy because, well, life is a conspiracy, isn't it? You know, if you can lock the whole world in their homes for the best part of two years. Um, you got to start like asking questions, haven't you? That there is clearly like conspiracy, 
conspiracy goes on in the world. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, we, we're not trying to be quirky. We're not trying to be like right out there. And oh, my God. Um, I just thought, despite the serious nature of the death of Princess Diana, we, we could just have a chat about it. Um, because I, I picked up some stuff that I've never seen in the media. And we, I'm going to show you what I found today. And um, it, it, I, I think what we do need to acknowledge is that royal bloodlines, the bloodlines of the elite, they don't have to be royalty. But for example, if you trace the Bush family ancestry, you'll find a connection there with the royal family in the UK. You, you can do this with pretty much... Um, uh, and I use the word elite, you know, in uh, lightly, folks. You, you, you know what I'm trying to say. You, you can, you can trace that the, the interconnectedness of this echelon of society that has gone on for thousands of years goes back to ancient Babylon. And we're going to be looking a bit at, at um, Babylonian worship, which might be new to some people but when you track back things like um esoteric agenda whether that's you know freemasonry whether it's royalty oh etc etc you'll f find an awful lot of babylonian symbolism so we're talking going back to the days of egypt you know the beginnings of civilization etc etc and we're just going to be having a look at that. Um, but I think I think it's fair to accept that, you know, if you've got an elite there that's been going for thousands of years and they still remain, you know, the controllers of society, I don't think it's a, a step to say that possibly they have different rules to you and I. They live their lives under different rules. They... they you know, associate with different people to you and I. Um, there's different beliefs going on there. And like I say, to keep this going for thousands of years, there must be like some thread that, that, that goes through all that. You know, it's not all just like happenstance, right? Um, so we're going to be looking at things like this. Look, this is the, uh, the ancient Greek god Diana who was the uh, god of hunting, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, we'll, we, we can actually have a look, bit a bit of a closer look at that. Let's, let's see what, um, see what Wiki, our friends at Wikipedia have got, got to say. So make me a bit smaller. Diana mythology. Diana is a goddess in Roman and Hellenistic religion, primarily, primarily considered a patroness of the countryside, hunters, crossroads and the moon. She is equated with a Greek goddess Artemis and absorbed much of Artemis' uh, mythology early in Roman history. Blah, 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 blah. I don't think we have to read all this. Um... But uh, Diana has been considered a triple deity merged with a goddess of the moon, Luna, Selene, and the underworld. Oh, it starts to sound a bit dark, doesn't it? Um, just going to read you this bit. Uh, da, 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 da. The persona of Diana is complex and contains a number of archaic features. Originally considered to be a goddess of the wilderness and of the hunt, a central sport in both Roman and Greek culture. Um, the bit I was going to get to, I'm probably going to lose it now, is that... Uh, Diana was closely associated with lakes, um, the moon, as we as ascertained, um, 
And a dog. Always pictured with a dog. Going back to our picture here. There we go. Um, there was something else I was going to mention there, but had it, lost it. Doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I've been doing a bit of digging over the years and, and just kind of looking into this. And I've noticed a few things that no, nobody like ever talks about. So what I do, like right from the beginning, I'm just going to go through some photos that I've collated over the years. Um, as you can see, starting with this one, Diana, the hunter goddess, always pictured with a dog jumping up at her. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that dog tooth check? And folks, I just want to say now, I'm not trying to stretch here or make, you know, D David always says, doesn't he, join the dots. And um, you've got to be careful doing that. I mean, yes, you've got to join the dots in life to see the bigger picture and step out the matrix and see the, the, the massive, massive lie that's that's going on all, all around you. But also you you can't like chuck all your chips on one on one square just because you think it it suits your cognitive bias. So uh, for example, you know, you might see a guy walking down the street and he's got a Metallica t-shirt on. And immediately your cognitive bias tells you, "Oh, this guy's a Metallica fan and you know, I don't like Metallica and da da da. Whereas if you chat to the guy, he might say, oh, no, actually, man, I just I bought this in a charity shop. <laughs> I needed a T-shirt. Who's Metallica, by the way? Do you see what I'm saying, folks? We're not trying to, you know, we're not we're not trying to make the absurd fit our agenda here. It's just a chat, literally just a chat. Consider these things, throw them away. Don't even watch this video. That's absolutely fine. But um, um, I just wanted to point out, is is that not dog, what they call dog tooth check? I might be wrong. And again, let's remember that uh, nothing, you know, royals are dressed from birth. They actually have people that step into their bedroom in the morning with the clothes that they're going to wear that day. It's not like it's a choice that 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 they make. I don't know. I don't know how much choice they have in it. Um, there's that famous thing about Prince Charles when he goes hunting and he's doing his pheasant shoots. That the team have to start boiling eggs twenty minutes before he might return because they can't predict like when the hunt is going to end right so they start boiling eggs because if prince charles doesn't have his egg boiled perfectly the way he likes it he's not a happy bunny so they're literally boiling eggs in like in their hundreds and there is he come yet nope right throw them away get another one on is he here yet nope right throw them away you know it's it, it, it's um Yeah, so a lot of stuff that could like be beyond our belief. But going back to this one, you know, it, 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 many people would say nothing is coincidence. For example, and I don't know this picture. I, I just pulled it up, folks. But is that symbolic that Diana's got sheep on her jumper? Sheep, lamb to the slaughter. Who knows? Who's ever going to know? I wouldn't put all my chips on that square for certain. But what gets interesting um, I mean, he, here's a quote. I think this is from the Telegraph. The prince was coping with a loss. He added, he is very upset as Tigger was a companion for a very long time. The prince has always been fond of dogs and according to his biographer, Jonathan Dimbleby, he once owned a much cherished Labrador called Harvey, but it was reported that the Princess of Wales did not take to the dog, and the prince was asked to find him another home. Dog folks is going to be a recurring theme 
in the in this video uh and and, and you're going to see why let's move on just another quote princess diana and winston churchill's mental health experiences to be used to teach children how to cope with the black dog now you might be wondering why I keep mentioning mentioning dogs, um, but remember, Diana was the hunter goddess, and she was always pictured with a dog. If I can just get up my um, bum bum bum, I'm just going to get my web web browser up. This is where it gets interesting. So this guy was seen, and everyone remembers the white Fiat Uno, which is now red, apparently. Um, it was driven by a guy called Lee Van Than, who was a Vietnamese in immigrant into, into Paris or in, into France. And s witnesses in the tunnel, the Pont d'Alma tunnel, and we're going to come on to the symbology behind that tunnel and the flame that, that, that flies over that tunnel. But they said they saw this, this guy, they said they saw a white Fiat Uno, and in the back there you can actually see a big black dog. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Going back to our slides, uh, get the next one up for you. Prince Harry and Prince William slam the pack of dogs, paparazzi, that hounded, ha ha ha, Princess Diana. And we're going to come on to this because we're going to come and look at De some of David's work in a minute. But let me just uh, read this. The island where Princess Diana is buried also used to be a cemetery for family pets including her favourite cat, Marmalade. The wooded island, which was consecrated by the Bishop of Peterborough, sorry, Peterborough, before Diana's burial, is an ornamental lake. See the connection there? Uh, on the Althorpe Estate, so that's the ancestral home of her family, the Spencer family. The island at one time was a burial site for pets, and there are records of four or five of them, including Marmalade, blah, blah, blah. Um, Shelley Ann Clairecourt confirmed the report in Monday's The Mirror newspaper that pets were buried on the island. It, it quoted former Althorpe housekeeper, Maudie Pendry, saying, I cannot believe Earl Spencer could be so heartless to bury his sister in a dog burial ground. It is desecration. Well, yeah, if you view, view life like probably you guys and I do, you, you'd think of it that way, wouldn't you? you know, what, what, but, but of course, remember, these are elites that have been in power for thousands of years. They roll to the beat of a different drum. Um. I'm not saying anything here, folks. Really, I'm not. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I'm just pointing out these things. I wonder if there is a connection. That's all I'm saying. I wonder if there is a connection. Uh, here we go. We got the old flame, the flame of the uh, illuminated ones. This is the flame, isn't it? The Statue of Liberty that was presented to New York by uh, French, the Scottish Rite of uh, Freemasonry in, in France, and which stands over New York Harbour. Some of you, probably like myself, have seen it. But this is also the flame that sits on top of the Pont d'Alma Tunnel, where Diana's life came to an end. It's also the flame that sits on top of the grave, or, or let's just say that there is a flame that sits on top of the grave of JFK. This is where it starts to get interesting. Do you see the... Folks, 
this could be a load of horseshit. I, I completely agree. In your comments, guys, just be respectful. That's all I ask. You know, we're just chatting about this. You, be respectful. Respect other human beings. Don't write stuff that can put people on a downer because we're in a mental health crisis and, 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 and that's just, it, that doesn't make sense. Um, but again, I don't know if we can read the text there, but here's the thing. This is on their honeymoon. And many people were surprised that when Prince Charles and Princess Diana got married, rather than go to some, I don't know, English enclave somewhere in the world, I don't know, Barbados or somewhere or what. No, they went to the, um, I believe this is the Balmoral Estate. And rather than stay you know, in, in the estate itself or get a top hotel, etc. Et no, they stayed in the hunting lodge. Um, they stayed in the hunting lodge. Remember, Diana, the goddess of hunting. I just find that interesting. And you can see that this... Um, you re Remember, guys, at this time, this was the most important photo on the planet as far as the mainstream went. The notion that Diana would have woken up that morning and gone, oh, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to wear that, that that red pullover I've got. Blah, blah, blah. It could be true. We don't know. We weren't there, were we? Or it could be that it was it was picked for her. Again, again, we don't know. But if we look closer at it, I might be wrong here and feel free folks to, to correct me in the comments, but is that not a jackal? The the, the, the dog doggy like symbol that you can see here. Is that not a jackal? Is that not what was referred to in ancient Babylon as Anubis? Um, let's just have a look at Anubis. Where are we? Let's see if I can find it. So Anubis, Egyptian god. Um, Anubis, also called Anu Anpu, ancient Egyptian god of the dead. Wow. Um, represented by a jackal or the figure of a man with the head of a jackal. Later overshadowed by, by Osiris. Uh, I'm not going to read this. His particular concern was with the funerary cult and the care of the dead. He was reputed to be the uh, inventor of embalming, an art he first employed on the corpse of Osiris. Uh, so I just find that fascinating. Have we got actual, actual... Let me see if I can just get a picture of the... Yeah, here we go. Yes, so some people would say that is that there not the symbolism on Diana's jumper? So we got the hunting goddess who's always depicted with a dog jumping up at her. We got Anubis here, god of the dead, or takes care of the people in 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 the funeral procedure. And I was just wondering if that is the same symbology on, on this jumper. Let's move on. There we go again. So this is Pont de Alma in, in, in Paris, uh, the tunnel where Diana died. It is a bit weird, folks. Come on. You've got to say this is the flame of the illuminated, the Illuminati, the 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 one the the enlightened ones that that blah 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 the same people if you read books um where is it can't find it it's there somewhere doesn't matter but if you read uh, 1666 
by Robert Sepper. He talks about how approximately 400 years ago, the Illuminati, which was formed by a chap called Adol, um, Adam Weishaupt, uh, uh, they came together with the Rothschild banking family and also a, 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 a cult or a sect called the Sabbatean Frankists. And they combined those, uh, so the, the, the financial system, which is slavery as, as we know it, they combine that with the esoteric, i, the unspoken uh, language, and they combine it with a with a cult. Some people would say that is what we now know as the global global cabal. Let's move on. Not sure what this picture is. I don't know about this, folks. I just pulled it up, but. Is there any coincidence that Richard Branson came to fame because he called his company Virgin or he bought into something that you and I are, you know, not fully, fully aware of, aware of? Because it's the same, um, again, the same symbology of the Statue of Liberty, uh, the Statue of Liberty. Folks, if you know more than this, put it below and I'll do another video on this. But you, you, you get what I'm saying at when you see the, the, the movies and you, and you, you see the, the, the woman stood on a pyramid, like looks like the Statue of Liberty. Um, again, all goes back to Babylonian uh, sun worship. I'm not saying that, that Diana is in any way a part of this. No, of course I'm not. What I'm saying, though, is like, does she choose? Did she choose her own wardrobe? Are we ever going to know? Possibly not. Um, so, yeah, so. That was just some stuff I came up with. Um, just bear with me one sec, folks. Da, da, da. Just bear with me one sec. Oh, I've got pop-ups coming up. Um, just looking at the Statue of Liberty. Some, guys, you're going to have to fill us in more on this, but uh, a robed Roman Liberty goddess. Um What's the connection there with the the Babylonian sun worship? Uh, the the name is escaping me of this character in in um, in, in Babylonian worship. Can't uh, sorry, folks. Can't remember everything. But uh, what I wanted to come on to, and let me just check. I'm not missing any. Um, Oh, is this one as well? This is just by the by, folks, but I thought this was interesting. When when the um, intelligence agencies analyse the media, the, the video footage outside of the Ritz in Paris, where Dodie and um, Diana were with their bodyguards, it was uh, Kev Wingfield and Trev Reese jones I believe they were former paras. Not sure if they joined the regiment, but uh, they were the bodyguards at the time. When they were in the um, the Ritz, and it started to become evident that I think Dodie wanted to go to his apartment with Diana. From a bodyguard perspective, those guys must have had a nightmare. Because any bodyguard would have gone, no guys, just stay here. Stay. There's paparazzi everywhere out there. Um it's late at night. We've all had a drink. Well, <laughs> at least the driver, Omri Paul, was alleged to, wasn't he? Although the the alcohol count in his blood was never what the the mainstream media made it out to be. But any bodyguard would, I, I'm sure those boys would have gone, no, let's stay here. And then I'm sure they would have been met with stubbornness on the part of the of Diana and Dodie, it said, "No, we want to go to the apartment. Let's let's go out the back door. Let's jump in a Mercedes. we we'll, you know we've we we we've got this." Um, but there were two people in that 
video footage that have never been identified. Everybody in the video outside of the Ritz was identified, but there were two men that have never been identified to this day. Just thought I'd throw that in there. But there was also this. Witness saw white flash in Diana. Not even going to say that, but in the tunnel. And this has been disputed. This guy's evidence, but but whatever. But the point is, the flash they're referring to um, in this context w would have been a weapon that's used in counter-terrorism. And it's a torch that basically fires such an intense beam of white light that it, it blinds your, your ret you know, it takes your retinas out. It damages temporarily, um, has such an effect on the, your, the retinas in your eye that you can't see. And it was alleged that a motorbike pulled in front of the Mercedes, turned around, the guy on the back turned around, flashed the car, and then bang, it smacked into the pillar. How much, um, you know, how much weight we should put in that, I don't know. The media are still going, no, no, it's Henri Paul, he's drunk, he was driving too fast. Interesting, they hit the 13th pillar. As we're going to see, David makes quite a lot of this, but it's, uh, you know, could you be mind programmed, MK Ultra that much to hit one pillar in a tunnel when you're traveling? I don't think it was traveling as fast as people said, but even if you're traveling at 60 mile an hour, that's still still sort of some feet. But the fact that uh, that as a driver, your your retinas could be blinded, I I find that believable. What reasons? I don't know. Um, Muhammad Al Fayed, so Dodi's father, very grieving father. You 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 can only feel for the guy. He clearly thought it's the royals, didn't he? The royals don't want you know this ex princess or former prince to to marry a Muslim. Then of course you could say, what about the arms companies who make billions every year? putting these evil landmines in the ground it's their trade is killing kids basically and if there's not a more sociopathic industry to be involved in or well, certainly one where you, you don't you your morals go out the window it's got to be the arms trade isn't it and of course diana was talking out about that she walked across a, a i think it was cambodia um she actually walked across an area that had been landmined obviously cleared and it made front page news. It was huge. Um, could that have been another factor? Or, and let's just go back now to this one. Dun, dun, dun. Could it be darker? Could it be that some sort of um, Babylonian sun worshipping sacrifice took place probably not too much of a stretch for those of you that that have done research in this area um probably not a stretch for those of you that have looked into the what can we say well let's just let's just leave it as all the missing children that that you know all the children that go missing every year that never get accounted for um if I was to mention pizzas now, or dare I say octagons, I know some of you will 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 know what I'm talking about. Could it be something? Could it be something darker? I'm talking of somebody that explores such issues. Um, just we're going to just go back to this one again. Remember, Diana honeymoon, dog, hunting lodge. Um, Anubis on the thing we got this chap here this Vietnamese immigrant that was allegedly in the tunnel and he, he panicked and he painted his car red after the event, white Fiat Uno painted it red as you can see there in the picture big dog in the back I don't know we could be stretching folks couldn't we and I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with you you know, I wouldn't disagree with you, but I, f I find this fascinating.
I find this sort of stuff fascinating. Um, so we've got a bit of David here. We've looked at Anubis. We've looked at Diana. We've looked at the Statue of Liberty. This was a video that David did um, a long time ago now. And uh, we won't play all of it, folks. It's obviously not our material, but, but we can have a look at some of it and we can see where he has drawn some of the same parallels as me. We can also see where he's he's possibly stretched a bit. I mean, for example, he said, why did Trevor Reese Jones, why was he the only one in the car that had his seatbelt on? Bodyguards don't wear seatbelts. They've got to be free to protect their clutch. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, poo-pooing the wonderful David, but what I can tell you is, no, the bodyguard should be the first person to have their seatbelt on. Why? Because if they get smashed off the road by some, you know, kidnap or attack, you, you can't be dead in the car. you got to have your, you got to be safe. The same way a rally driver wears a seatbelt. <laughs> you got to be safe. Um I would imagine what happened, and I've read Trevor Reese jones uh, um, biography, he would probably turn around and said, uh, Sir, Madam, would you put your belts on, please? And they probably looked at him and gone, oh, 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 no. <laughs> because this is back in the days, folks, before we really realised, you know, the seatbelt laws only came in, 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 was it the 80s? When I was a kid, nobody wore a seatbelt. It was a joke. It's like if you're a sissy, you wore a seatbelt or the kids were piled in the back of the car, whatever. So I'm just pointing out one fact where people can be wrong. I would say a bodyguard who knows his stuff would have his belt on because that way he'd be in the best position, should there be an accident, to then turn around and protect his clients. But we've got to be careful stretching sometimes. Every so often there are certain events and certain people which pull in all strands of the various elements I've talked about so far over these hours and the assassination, because that's what it was, of Diana, Princess of Wales had all these elements of bloodlines, of royalty, of uh, secret societies and of the symbolism of the secret societies um, in the actual assassination itself. In The Biggest Secret, I've gone into this in tremendous uh, detail in one chapter in particular and uh, there is a, uh, a video documentary planned of this uh, Diana assassination in the background to it maybe it will even have been uh, uh, done and be available by the time you see this guys I've got to pause it every so often to make comment you can't just play someone else's video um, but uh, a massive respect for this man we're going to try and get David on the podcast um, what he went through in order to be where he is today is just beyond belief. The the, the ridicule he suffered back was, was it late eighties, early night. It was just disgusting sign of human behaviour. When anyone's going for a breakthrough, a breakdown, mental health, you don't fucking laugh at them. You know, you, you if at best you just don't say anything. You keep but. But, uh, you know, massive respect for, for David's work. You're always going to get, um, what can we say, dodgy areas. The same as I'm talking to you now. I might have just said something that's an absolute load of cods while I'm going to hold my hand up. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. You're probably right. You know, um, I think you have to be really careful so you don't go into the realms of like clutching at straws. Um, and it's difficult. You know, it's difficult. There's so much information. I know that uh, David's latest book, when he wrote about the events in New York, New York and Washington that time, I did see one comment left on the Amazon reviews of someone that was quite angry, going, David, you're still pushing this when I've told you that, you know, there's new evidence about that. There's new evidence. So, you know, we have to be careful developing a narrative and then just sticking with it because it kind of, I don't know, like suits our purpose or whatever, but but uh, not taking any anything away um, from this gentleman. 
he clearly loves people. He clearly understands we're one humanity, that um, that we're all one universe, and we. It would be helpful if we if we kind of started acting like that. So I'm not going to go into the Diana thing in great detail here because it's done elsewhere. But I just want to go through a few things. Um, from close confidence of Diana, it's very clear that uh, she realized after a while that she had been pulled in um, for a specific purpose. She used to call herself the Windsor Brood Mare. The Spencer family is an ancient bloodline which is interbred with many of the aristocratic families of Britain, of Europe, and of uh, America. Spencer's are distant cousins, for instance, of the Rockefellers. We covered this, didn't we? We said this. You know, ancient bloodlines. They don't beat to the same drum that you and I do. That there's there's a lot of stuff going on there that that we're not going to be privy to. Um, and she realized that they'd drawn her into the Windsor web because they wanted her genes. They wanted to fuse the Windsor genes with the Spencer genes to produce a, another a version of a, a genetic hybrid uh, with a particular genetic structure. Um, and from the very start, um, it's clear when you look at the story and the information that she was pulled in and identified for this from a very, very early age. She was actually um, brought up on the Sandringham estate um, and uh, knew the Queen and Prince Charles and stuff from a very early age. And I think a lot of people would would find that a stretch, wouldn't they? That something that could be so planned and so orchestrated, possibly over over decades if if not if not even more years but again i'm gonna try and find that bloody book i don't know not sure what i've done with it but when when you look at robert sepper's work and you 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 see how these organizations that form these esoteric so people organizations using hidden knowledge they formed 400 years ago 400 years and they had a plan they had their uh, NWO, didn't they? Their new world order back 400 years ago. That's incredible in itself because the, those guys must have known that way before it come to fruition, way before it developed into things like the World Economic Forum, you know, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Uh, you should be a transhuman version of yourself with microchips in your brain and you'll be happy, etc. So you'll, you'll have no no cash. There'll just be programmable digital currency. So if you're a naughty boy, you'll be cut. You know, this was way before all this. 400 years before. These these folks knew that they'd be dead long gone before their, their, uh, their grand plan as it's referred to, came came to fruition. So, yeah. So what David's saying here now, it, it's not that big a stretch, is it? Um, the Windsors are, this is the Queen here, a, um, an ancient reptile human bloodline. And I was kind of surprised, um, although my research was going that way, uh, to be told that uh, by a confidant of Diana that her nickname for the Windsors was the lizards or the reptiles. And she used to say, in all seriousness, they're not human. Guys, just a point on this. I, I, I genuinely don't know whether David means this, like, metaphorically. Um, I know I've seen a lot of his stuff that the people are, there are people around the planet that genuinely, genuinely believe this. I, I wouldn't go there, folks, because I don't do anything that I don't have proof for. It's just that simple. I deal with fact. If I can't pre, I, I, I might, I might have some like theories on stuff, but like I wouldn't go as far as to say like th this is a definite. But, um, but then you know, who knows? And I'm not here to to put put down uh, other people, but for the purpose of this video, I, um. I wanted to just look at the dog thing because, and the hunter goddess thing. I think it's just fascinating. All this dog symbolism that's gone unnoticed. It's never been never been mentioned. Not not just in the media, but like not by, you know, the dog in the car, the dog on her thing, Anubis, go into the hunting lodge for for for, for, for your, um, you know, your your honeymoon when you could have gone anywhere else. 
having that specific photo with the Anubis on your thing with a dog jumping. Is it all coincidence? I'm I'm happy to say it is, folks. I honestly, I'm, I'm I I I just think you've got to be open minded to all this. But I'm also um, you know, I'd also acknowledge that yeah, of of course. You don't stay elite for thousands of years by just doing what Joe Bloggs does, do you? And she knew far more about this background by the time she died than um, people in the public domain would ever realize. Um, and uh, she'd certainly realized what the Windsors were about and um, where they came from. Now, this is a, a guy who has been going around saying, that Diana and his son Dodie were assassinated. I haven't got time to go into why um, someone might feel it acceptable for their son to die in a, in a, in a road crash, um, but if you read The Biggest Secret, you can see some of the background to this. If we start judging whether something is possible by what we would do, we're going to lose the plot, because not everyone thinks like everyone else. And when you look at the background to Diana's assassination, the person that had complete control of her security and her movements in the crucial period, uh, days uh, leading up to it, but particularly on that specific day, was Mohammed Al-Fayed. And when you look at his background, um, uh, as I've said in The Biggest Secret, uh, you know when um, Mohammed Al-Fayed is trying to uh, kid you, trying to uh, tell you something that's not true because his lips are moving. It's the way you can see it, because this guy has lied his way through his whole uh, economic and business career. Guys, I'm just going to stop there, because I think the point David's alluding to is, uh, is this one. Hang on. Where is it? We'll find it. Control of Let her, me just her play it a bit. On the crucial day, um, there's uh, the ISIS. Yeah, that he's got some headdress on that that relates to um, ISIS, ancient again, ancient Babylon, ancient Babylonian worship that many would say still goes on to this day. Um, I don't know about this, folks. I, I wouldn't poo-poo what anyone else says. Um, in this kind of arena, but I, for me, Mohammed Al Fire, and I could be so completely wrong. I, he doesn't come across as someone that's very bright to me. Probably got accumulate his money, like David said, for a few dodgy deals, pulling the wool over. Yeah, whether he had had some. Um, involvement in uh, personally I don't think so and whether the fact that he had some Egyptian headdress on when you gotta remember he is from Egypt it has any symbology with um, you know it, or is linked in any way to I'm not saying this folks that's all, all, all I'm saying I wouldn't I wouldn't say um you know, anyone else couldn't say it. Let's just let's just move forward. To, uh... And the background to Diana's assassination, you have to go back into the ancient world. You can pick one of these uh, reptile, um, one of the pure key reptile human bloodlines up in Troy, ancient Troy, which is what we now call Turkey. You can follow this bloodline through the Caucasus Mountains and into Europe and into what we call France. In fact, France is named after these people. They called themselves the Secambrian Franks. And they had a royal offshoot and eventually became known by this royal offshoot called the Merovingians. And the Merovingians set up the city we call Paris. Um, you're looking at a part of the modern Paris, which is the, was the, the place that they established the original Paris. And they named the city after one of the um, people involved in the Trojan Wars, a guy called Prince Paris, um, and there's Notre Dame, Our Lady, Diana, Semiramis, Isis Cathedral, and this was where Paris kind of came out of with the Merovingians uh, many, many centuries ago. Now, these Merovingians, um, Franks, the Cambrian Franks, worshipped the goddess Diana, who was one of the great goddesses of the ancient world. 
and they built underground chambers um, just outside the original Paris to do their sacrifices and ceremonies to the goddess Diana. You've got to admit, folks, whether you, you know, if you want to remain ambivalent, I, I don't blame, I, I, I genuinely don't blame you, but it is fascinating, is it not? Of course, as Paris has got bigger and bigger, the area of that sacrifice area for the goddess Diana is now modern Paris. And it's still an underground chamber. That point is called the Pont d'Alma Tunnel where Diana died. Um, in Whoa! Hold on a bit there, boyo. Are you saying that this ancient um, blood bloodline that formed Paris... Um, the area where they had their sacrifices, and I don't think that's any news, folks, is it, that people in the past sacrificed people? I think many people would probably say it still goes on, but that's that's another subject. But that's the Pont de Alma tunnel with the Illuminati flame on top of it. Starts... It, it, just starts to get fascinating. <laughs> in 1997. Um, and Diana is actually blood related to the Merovingian line. This is the Ritz Hotel owned by Mohammed Al Fayed. And all around the square, it's called the Vendome, um, you see at first floor level um, depictions in gold of that symbol I talked about um, a long time ago, the circle, the cross, and the sun on the, the center. And it comes uh, from one of the French kings, one of the Louis, who was known as the Sun King, who built uh, the Palace of Versailles. And in the back of the Palace of Versailles, in the grounds, is a depiction of the goddess Diana, which this aristocratic uh, bloodline network very much focus on as one of their deities. Someone said, this is the Kennedy assassination here, something very true. When you try to understand um, who was behind an assassination, look at who had the power to remove the security at the crucial time. Okay, folks, I'm going to fast forward this bit because I think we sort of covered this. Um, it goes without saying, and I can categorically, well, maybe I can't. What do I know? But... Uh, I think there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever her bodyguards were good, good, good men. I think they were former paras. I don't think they are in any, they should come under any scrutiny whatsoever. I think they were just victims in this, um, just the same as the, three, as, as the three other people in the car there with Trev. Um, what, what, uh, David's pointing out here is when you look at um, guys if you've ever not wet watched uh, what's the video we've got it on the channel it's called like everything you've ever known is a lie or, or something like this it's fascinating to learn about the Kennedy assassination it's fascinating to learn that there were 12 snipers 12 you're never going to hear this in the mainstream 12 that the final shot came from the storm drain Hence why the president's head went back. It was the storm drain in front. When the first shots had missed, the guy, and you can see this in his, uh, I think you can see this in his uh, Zapruder video, he lifts his umbrella. There's a guy on a sunny day with an umbrella up. He's, uh, you know, uh, shadow government, dark, dark agenda, whatever. This was a, 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 um, a cooperation the Kennedy assassination was a cooperation between mafia, uh, government, um, and and let's just say those in the shadows. And the reason the guy lifts the umbrella on a sunny day is to say he's not hit yet. He's not hit yet. Yes, yes, you've hit his body. There's been no fatal shot. And he lifts the umbrella. And that was the signal to tell the guy in the storm drain, take the final shot. And he takes the final shot. And that's why the president's head, fascinating. The guy in the storm drain then ran back to his car dealership where he was a salesman and his boss is like, what's happened to you? You're covered in shit. And he got suspicious, reported the dude to the police. The police come and arrested him and he was released within, you know, a few hours. Absolutely fascinating. 
absolutely fascinating. Um, so let's just move forward here a bit. Um, David's now talking about trauma-based mind control. Trauma-based mind control. During the last war in the concentration camps of Germany, in fact, way, way back this has been known about, but particularly during the last war, they started to perfect um, the manipulation of a natural mechanism in the mind that shuts out trauma. What they did um, was to understand that if you could systematically traumatize someone, their mind would shut out the memory of it and create an amnesic barrier which would be um, disconnected from the rest of the mind. This is what happens when people have a major road accident and they can't remember what happened. It's because the amnesic barrier has been created. Okay, I'm just going to step in here, folks, and say really fascinating to check out MK Ultra Mind Control. This is the, uh, the, the practice of you, you, you take someone, I think the younger, the better, and the more tra trauma you can subject them to, the more their mind compartmentalizes this trauma and creates different identities. It's in the movies and your Hollywood and in, in your sim you know, your symbolism, which is always there. It's re it, it, it's um, represent by shattered glass. So if you see, if you're watching, you know, your pop idol that you love and the videos all have got shattered glass mirrors, it, it, it's, it's um, insinuating mind control, but not to you. You're, you're not supposed to notice it. It's only because I've just told you that you, you now will notice it. Um, the monarch butterfly as well. You see, why is these celebrities always got these butterfly tattoos and this tattoo, this butterfly... Monarch, I think Project Monarch was the original mind control program. Again, folks, put it in the comments uh, if, 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 if you if you know know more on this. But it is fascinating when you um, you w when you get these uh, assassinations of high high profile people, like for example the Kennedys. Very often, the shooter or the alleged perpetrator has like no recollection of like what went on and a really interesting thing is that people around them smell a certain smell and this is said to be the smell of somebody when that the, the body naturally produces when they're under trauma mind control again it's not something i i know huge amounts about but i have personal uh, acquaintances let's say friends that I I look at their behavior uh, I'm talking people in the industry now folks that and you're like hmm like yeah there's just a a million questions come up you know a million a million questions hypnotism as we know that that's incredibly powerful you can get people up on stage and just get them to do shit that like you'd never do, isn't it? You know, bark like a dog. Ah, ah. And and when they wake up, they no recollection that, that they've done it. This is what David's getting at now. I'm not going to go any further on uh, this bit, folks, because it's not really um, to do with what I was saying. There's also the stuff about the, uh, let's have a look, like street, like uh, the video cameras Almost. being turned off. The Arc de Triomphe, where Dodi fired had his flat. When they went earlier in the day, the car went down to... Okay, I'm just going to interrupt. Apologies, but what David's saying here is the route that they took that night was illogical. They, like, literally did a big circle to Dodi's flat when they could have just gone like that. This could be for several reasons. A good bodyguard is always going to tell you to vary your route, isn't he? You know, this is not any anyone that's been in the forces understands this. It could be right. Let's not go the predictable way because blah 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 blah. Also, all allegedly, all the video cameras were out. There was something like thirty video cameras on that route, and none of them were working that evening. Blah 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 blah. Um, just going to move on a bit. Of the moon energy. 
This is the Pont d'Alma tunnel. Um, it's very short, and I've been through it, and they keep telling me in the media it's very dangerous. I didn't really see that myself. And it's very close to the Arc de Triomphe, which is um, a, another um, obelisk symbol. This is the 13th pillar. And so, um, interesting one there, friends, just, just, just for your information. But the obelisk, obviously, again, ancient Babylonian sun worship. A apparently, it's like re re meant to represent the phallus. That's winky if you've got children. <laughs> and when you see it, it's, it's normally, when you see this structure in society, look around it and there'll be a round symbol. So, for example, the, the London Eye is a great, great example. They have the male and the female. Again, all ancient Babylonian worship that you can see that has been continued to this day. Who by? I don't know. You, you tell me. Is it some high level like Masonic cult? Is it these Babylonian Frankit, you know, these um, uh, pass, pass, <laughs> but it does get fascinating. He's talking about There's the 13th no pillar here now. The 13th pillar, given the obsession with symbolism of this brotherhood, unless it was meant to happen. Um, I've talked to people who... Um... Okay, David's just going back. I'm sorry, folks. I'm, you, we're going to be here all day if I just play all of this. But he's going back to the Monarch um, MK Ultra mind control now. Is it? Could Omri Paul have been under mind control? Or could it have been the person in the tunnel with a flash? Uh, could it have been the white Fiat Uno, Fiat Uno that clipped the car and send it on this uh, traje trajectory that ultimately le led to um, three deaths? Who knows? But we're allowed to talk about these things, aren't we? We're allowed to talk about these things. This is where it gets interesting because... When we're talking about gods and worshipping and da, da da then obviously when we're talking in Babylonian, we're also talking about human sacrifice, aren't we? The notion is that if you sacrifice a person, um, uh, specifically a child, especially if it's an intelligent child, and you can create fear in them, they produce all this like um, uh, adrenaline. And that if you can kill them at that moment, you then soak up this power. This is the theory, folks, amongst these fucking idiots. I, I you know, I, I, I can promise you, I'll be having a bonfire this afternoon, and I'm pretty happy with that. Don't need to be, you know, scaring people and sacrificing them. But you know, it has gone on. It has gone on. It's gone on since time immemorial. And. Um, the suggestion here is, was this a ritual sacrifice? Was this whole thing, the whole being brought into the family, the da-da-da-da? Again, it's another angle that we're, we're probably never going to know, but it doesn't mean we can't, can't discuss it, does it? ...miles an hour to that is walking pace. Therefore, the programming goes in at the subconscious level... Okay, we're still talking about the MK Ultra. Let's go forward a bit. Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. This is the shot that that particular camera would have had. Uh, the Mercedes came in on this side of the road, and had that camera been on, everyone would have known by now what happened. They could have seen it, but it was switched off, or at least we're told it was. And so we have a situation in which um, Diana was held in that place for all that time and she was clinically dead by the time she left it and the okay just to chip in folks so the suggestion here is that had this been and i'm not saying it is folks i'm just saying the suggestion is had this been in a ritual sacrifice it would have necess necessitated if that's even a word um the the sacrificial victim, a.k.a. we, you know, we know who that dying in that tunnel, in that sacrificial place that's been 
um, traditionally through history been used for this purpose. The person couldn't leave the tunnel. That that like don't work. <laughs> Got to die in. And the suggestion is this is why the ambulance was there for 50 minutes. Um, all the paramedics are going to come in now and go, oh, no, what it is, is uh, you got to, you know, they would have tended to her and tried to stabilize her. At... Yeah, we get that. You know, we, we that was the thing in Vietnam, wasn't it? They lost so many soldiers in Vietnam because they could chop her them out so quick. They could get the soldier that was shot in the jungle or blown up on the Huey within, you know, 20 minutes. The problem was they weren't being stabilized on the ground. You know, so they weren't having a drip put in. They weren't having their, their, their tourniquets applied. They weren't having, you know, fluids, whatever, reassurance. No, they were being like literally bundled on the chopper. When they get back to base, they'll take care of it. And a lot of people died that way. So there's always the, um, you know, the argument for stabilizing people on the ground. In this situation, though, when you get an ambulance, there's, I don't know. I'm I'm not a paramedic. I would think like get the person in the ambulance and then do the stabilization work on the way to the hospital. But it took an inordinate, inordinate amount of time to get Diana into that ambulance. Apparently, so long so that by the time they did, she was clinically pronounced as gone. Um, question has been, even from people who have said, yes, it was an accident, why did they do that? Because according to the strict and obsessional symbolic ritual of this brotherhood, she had to die in that underground chamber on the site of ancient Diana worship and sacrifice to Diana. There's no way she was going to be allowed to leave the tunnel until she was dead, and so they kept her there all that time when um, most doctors, um, as they, some have pointed out, would have had a hospital as quick as possible and she'd still be alive today, almost certainly. So the, the Diana story is just full of endless symbolism, and I'm just skipping the surface here. The, the detail is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, this is the top of the Pont d'Alma tunnel. Um, and as, as I mentioned earlier, there is the depiction of the flame held by the Statue of Liberties in Paris and in New York, standing on a black pentagram, the classic satanic symbol. And that is where they take the flowers and stuff uh, now. This area of Paris with the um, Eiffel Tower, uh, the River Seine, is an ancient, ancient, um, sacred site to this brotherhood. And uh, it's absolutely no coincidence that this is where they brought Diana to die that night. Um, indeed, when you go through her life in general, you find that the symbolism of the goddess Diana comes up again and again. When she married Prince Charles, they married her in St. Paul's Cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral is on an ancient site of goddess Diana worship. There we go, another connection. And when they brought her uh, coffin out of Paris, it wasn't with the Union Jack and the flag of the country, um, it was with the flag of the royal family, full of these old symbols of the sun going back to the ancient world. And um, as I've uh, pointed out many times, and with a lot of supporting evidence, the British royal family were definitely involved in her murder. Um, interestingly, when the crash happened, uh, this guy comes into focus. This is Diana's brother, Earl Spencer. And I, there's one or two questions I'd like to ask him, really, because um, the symbolism of the goddess Diana in the ancient world related again and again to the tree grove, which is the sacred place to the goddess Diana. That's where the, 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 they, they used to worship her, in the tree grove. Lakes and islands, those three things keep reoccurring again and again and again in the stories of the goddess Diana. Okay, folks, hope you don't mind. I'm going to chip in now. I can't just play you all this. There's a link below, folks, if you want to watch this whole video. Remember, you know, you can remain, like, aloof. You, you don't have to buy into everything. Um, but it really helps to just have a, I think, to have a curious mind. Because if I didn't have a curious mind, 
like I wouldn't know what I know now about human health. I would probably have just gone along with, I don't know, like, let's say, for example, an agenda that 99% of my country, like, just committed to with absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of either science, human health, or um, the functioning of the human blah, 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 happy to be placed under house arrest for two years, right? And I've got to that point because I can sit back and take this in. I don't have to believe every single word, but I, you know, I take, I, I take from life like what, what I think I need. And I think it's really worked. I think it really helps you to build up a holistic picture of what's going on. What David's saying here now is what I said to you, um, what I mentioned earlier, sorry, and it comes back to the um, the old goddess Diana. Here we go. How she was pictured in in on uh, closely. Uh, start again. How she was closely linked to lakes and and forest groves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How uh, when she died. There was a bit of a, a furor because people were like, huh? Why are you burying her on a dog burial ground? You know, which happened to be a lake surrounded, uh, an island on a lake surrounded by trees, etc., etc. Um, anyway, folks, I'm going to bug out. Before I do that, I'm just going to have a look at our chat just to acknowledge all you wonderful people that have tuned in today, massive love to you all. Please, please look after yourself. Please stop watching the mainstream media. Or if you do, understand this is the mouthpiece of, um, you know, uh, this is the mouthpiece of the elites, the, the financial elite, the banking elite, the investment elite, BlackRock, Vanguard, you know, the, these are people that don't like you. They literally hate you so much you could never understand. To them, you're nothing, right? They, they're they sociopathic. Possibly psych... I, I, we could have a big debate there, couldn't we? They don't care. They just care about power. They just care about power because they're incredibly, incredibly damaged. Um, so please... Stop believing what you see in their meat. It's owned by them. It's a version of the truth. It's certainly not the truth. And uh, you're worth so much more. Your family, your children are worth so much more than believing nonsense. Incidentally, we did a video yesterday, didn't we? The death rate at the moment is 60... Depending on which, which you, if you source uh, national statistics, it's 10% higher than it has been for the last five years. This should be a concern to all parents. You know, what, what is causing this? This, this should be of interest. Um, but you're not going to get, you're never going to get there. If you just, if, if you're that family that has Sky TV, was it, was it Sky News? Scrolling endlessly 24 hours a day. Or at least when you're away. You ain't never going to get there, you know. You're never going to find out what you're truly worth. That you're utterly beautiful. Completely loved. That you're a fucking legend. A massive, massive legend. And yet, these people will hide that from you. They'll hide it from you. So, thanks to everyone that has tuned in. My God. Thousands of comments today, so I can't go through all of them, but we've got all our usual friends. Hi, Mikhail. Good to see you. Joe, good to see you, brother. There's John. Sovereign. Oh, I could go on. And I could go on. I could go on. Um, there's Catherine. Catherine's a channel member. It means so much, folks. If this stuff is interesting to you, please support the channel. You, you obviously like and subscribe, but you can become a channel member. It's one ninety nine a month. It's nothing, is it? When are you going to, you're not going to get taught this stuff in schools. The media is not going to teach you this stuff. 
You've got to rely on those renegades <laughs> like uh, like David who are brave enough just to say, fuck you, I don't give a shit. You're all a bunch of liars. I'm going to tell my children the truth because I love them. And that's what parents should do. That's what military should do. Veterans should do. Stand by your oath. Protect the people. Um, join the channel, folks. Look, like Catherine has there. Thank you, Catherine. Effie has. You can see the little, they've got the, Viking axe next to them. Um, we've got hoax there. Look, hoax, Viking axe. Um, massive love to you guys. I really, really appreciate that you 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 support what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to get a conversation going. We're just trying to look at the truth. We're trying to get to it. You know what? How can we better our lives? How can we stay away from this nonsense? How can we go to bed at night feeling absolutely just utterly wonderful? that light is so brilliant for us and we wake up with the exact same feeling we go out there we put this love kindness peace empathy this positive energy out into the world which is so dark why is it dark why do you think look <laughs> what the fuck have we just watched this is the 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 mo the modus operandi of these incredibly damaged people that are damaged from birth they go through all kind of stuff we're, we're never going to witness. All they can get in life is power. That's all they can get. They don't get the empathy. They don't get the empathy. They think it's like something they can't attain. So they go to the dark side. And they're like, well, fuck it. I'll just make a shitload of money and I'll control people. And I'll, you know, I'll put stuff in the skies. I'll put stuff in the water. I'll put stuff in the food. I'll stop people growing food, actually, because we're that powerful. We can stop you growing plants in your backyard. You don't believe it? Have a look at the, the mold rates at the moment. Have a look at the infestation and people trying to grow their own vegetables. Do do your research. Um, there we go. Look, loads and loads of comments. I won't go anything into them anymore because we all need to get away from this bloody computer screen or tablet or phone. Um and go and do something less boring instead. Go and do something less boring instead. Do you remember Why Don't You? Wasn't that a great program? No surprise they don't have programs <laughs> like that anymore. So, folks, I hope this has been fun. Please, if you could do this one, like and subscribe. That's m massively going to help us on the channel. Please look after yourselves. Remember, you are sovereign beings. You're perfect as you are. You don't need no billionaire companies telling you what you need to do with your mind, your bodies, or whatever. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>